One of the remarkable stories in the Bible is of Mary and a few women who came with her to the tomb of Jesus early on Sunday morning of his resurrection. Now, of course, Mary and the other women did not know that he had already risen from the dead. They were expecting to be able to embalm his body. And as they were walking towards the tomb early that morning, they were talking amongst themselves, wondering who would help them move the big rock that is normally in front of the tombs like that. But as they approached there, they noticed that that tomb had no big stone or rock in front of it. It had been moved. Very curious then, they went to the entrance of the tomb, peering inside. They saw no body. Oh, but they saw a person there. There was a young man sitting on a ledge, and which the Bible says was an angel. And they inquired, where is the body of Jesus? Mary, assuming that somehow somebody must have stolen the body of Jesus. And this young man, this angel, said to them, I know you're very concerned, but don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Jesus is not here. He has risen as he said he would. Now, and then the angel gave Mary a task. Go back, said the angel, and tell the disciples and Peter, and here's what you tell them. Go ahead to Galilee because Jesus has gone there already. He's waiting for you. He'll meet you there. Have you noticed something strange about that? In this record found in Mark chapter 16, the angel says to Mary, go and tell the disciples and Peter. Now, Peter was one of the disciples. So for some reason, this angel, probably conveying the message as Jesus told him to, he singles out Peter. He doesn't just group him in with the other disciples. He singles him out. The disciples and Peter. Why would he do that? There is a very good reason for that. Jesus was wanting Peter to know that even though Peter had let Jesus down, denied knowing him three times, where Peter was in fact running away from Jesus, Jesus was as it were running toward Peter. He wanted Peter to know that he loved him in spite of what Peter had done. Peter had made a huge fool of himself he had embarrassed himself publicly, denying Jesus, speaking against his Lord, as if he had turned his back on Jesus. This was a very significant event in Peter's life. And Jesus, his heart was hurt, but his love did not end. He wanted Peter to know that in spite of what he did, he was still Jesus' good friend. You know, Jesus was looking ahead. It's like a song that says, He saw beyond my fault and saw my need. Jesus saw in Peter, not the Peter of failure, but the Peter of leadership. The same Peter would lead thousands of people to choose and follow Jesus on the day of Pentecost. The same Peter would boldly stand up in front of the Sanhedrin and speak out for Jesus. So Jesus looked beyond his failure and saw what Peter would be. It is also interesting that Jesus didn't make the message through the angel to address him as, as Simon. That was his common name, his given name. But Peter is the name Jesus gave him. There was that special bond. Please, Peter, I want you to know that no matter what you have done, no matter how much you've disappointed me, you still have a special place in my heart. Now, I don't know if you in your life feel that you've disappointed Jesus too much, that you are not worthy for him to call you his friend. Please know that Jesus is running after you. If you sense that your life is running away from him, he is running after you. Perhaps like me, you are the kind of Christian that, yeah, it's a good church goer and 
Outwardly, we look like pretty good people, good Christians, but inwardly, we know we sometimes act and think just like the devil. I'm like that. And perhaps you feel like, well, you have just made a clear decision that you're not going to give time to Jesus and God and the Bible in your life. You know, in spite of that, in spite of our waywardness, Jesus is running after us. He's calling us by our name. He has a purpose for us. He sees what we can be. And Jesus is inviting us to listen, to accept Him, and to let Him be our close and precious friend. You may have somebody as a friend, maybe someone in your home, who is turning away from God, maybe rebellious towards God. You know what they need from you? Exactly what Peter needed from Jesus, to know that you love them. You accept them as they are. You accept them as human beings. You value them. You don't judge them or treat them according to what they may deserve. You give them far more, far better treatment than what they would even expect. That is the way of Jesus. My name is Ivan Blake, Senior Pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Fletcher. And I would invite you to go to our website. There you will find our programs and activities of our church, found at www.fletchersda.org. And remember, no matter how you are running away from Jesus, He is running toward you.